You need ready I instructions and I'm perfect. <laughs> Give me a quick dive though, heart. Right, my turn to do you. Those are non-negotiable. Burger, do you want a mustache? ADHD brain. I don't know if you can tell that I'm excited about this stuff. Good morning, my tenacious T-Rex with tinnitus. Do you like this? Tinnitus. All right. Today. Mmm. Yeah. Ooh. So we posted a pretty different style of video on Friday. And it's about 130 something thousand views on TikTok. Really interesting though, because for a good engagement rate, I would typically expect 10% of that. So we'd be looking at uh, 1300. Yeah, 1300. It's only at like 4400. For 13,000. What? 1,003, yeah, 13,000. Yeah, 13,000. But it's only at 4,500. Now, the retention metrics at three seconds, which is where you want, where you would see the biggest drop off, we have 74% of people still watching, which is very high. That's very good. But there's a big tail off through the video, and I think the video finishes at around like 13 seconds. Sorry, 13% versus what I would expect at a around 25% and up. So essentially what I'm reading into this is the story wasn't engaging enough that people wanted to stay to the end. So that's one part. The other part is that there wasn't a big enough payoff for people to like the video. Also, there wasn't enough for people to, I, I think, I find that a lot of likes come in toward the beginning of the video and I think it's because people see the level of effort that's gone into making the video in terms of sound effects, a bit of editing. So likes normally come very, like, very much toward the beginning or at the end. If they're not at the beginning, that means that people uh, didn't see a huge amount of effort put into the video. And if they're not at the end, then it means there just wasn't that much of a payoff in the video. So some adjustments to make. But it did do 130,000 in a time where the previous four videos I had done had barely reached, I, th I think 60K was the max. And those were all edited in my typical style, like high uh, tension and whatnot. Anyway, today, a couple of things. One, we're gonna shoot the nose waxing video, get that edited and hopefully post it. And then we need to get to the cryotherapy and sauna. So we're gonna get home and get those. Uh, we have to do those today. Those are non-negotiable. So, see you at home. You ready for this? Right, let's turn it off. <laughs> Can you turn that off, please, Ruger? That's hot, hot. <laughs> this, it's gonna be mental with him. That hot, no, that's cold. That's cold water. Hey, roll your sleeves up if you're gonna play in the water. Okay, we need. To, can I have the hot water, please? Can I have the hot water on? Nice. Don't okay. get your hands out, it'll be too hot. That hot? Have you read the directions? Bless you. Okay. You haven't read the directions, have you? Yeah, the directions said... <laughs> the directions said... No, you need to melt it using micro the microwave. It, the, the box literally says, put the wax into the paper cup, add 80 milliliters of hot water. Yeah, but then you put it in the microwave. Dip the applicator into the wax. Yeah, how are the Step instructions one. on the outside different to the one from the inside? What is that? So those are mustache stickers? Ruger, do you want a mustache? Yes. Okay, let's turn, can you turn that off, please? Do you want a sticker? That's that's on. Can you turn it off? I'm gonna give that. Oops. Ruger. It says step one, put wax in the paper cup. Step two. Oh. Look at yourself in the mirror. Has to be boiling water, Ollie. 
Okay, I did get I did boil some water, so I'll go and get that. Look, Ruggy, look in the mirror. What? You got a mustache! Okay, I'll get boiling water. Yes. So okay. Get rid of it. Yeah, just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, we got yeah. two different levels of instructions. Should we just put a couple in here? Yeah, you have to put it in the yeah. paper okay. cup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What, and then put that in the water? Oh, good thing I'm in here. Yeah. Can put... Some of these beads in. And then put the water in there? No. I need this. You need to fill this up more. Bro, I... It's right... Look at, the, look at those instructions. No, babe, Bubby, you have to eat down, okay? No, that's too hot. This is hot. Okay, you're right, yeah. I mean, these instructions are different to that, so... Stop the whole kettle, so we're not going back and forth. Alright, so you're thinking we put wax in here, and then melt it in the cup. I'm not thinking. You need read the instructions, I'm, I'm perfect. <laughs> okay, alright, let's see how that does. Ow! Burnt myself. Alright, I thought it would be interesting while we do this um to talk through how like you and i view content differently like you said the other day that you saw kylan um which is our niece just in her room getting ready and she was just had a youtube video on in the background just some girl going about her day yeah i don't know who it was though you should text her now and find out who it was do you mind um I mentioned this in a vlog, one of these, a while ago. Oops. Because you, what do you do when you get ready? Oh, if I don't have Ruger, I... It's Real Housewives. Real Housewives of like Atlanta or Orange County or one of those rubbish ones, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And that is absolute rip drivel to me. And none of that is real. It's these people that live in this like fantasy world. Like a completely different life, and I can, I think, like, why is that interesting to you? I don't think, it's, I don't think interesting is the right word. I think it's just inter entertaining. Entertaining. Because they're always arguing. Hey, can you get down, please? So it's the drama of it. Yeah. Just the drama. <laughs> so you like the drama of it, even though, I'll let you finish that text. Okay, Rugi will melt, it's melting. Mmm, melting. <laughs> you what? She has her notification silence. So. Okay. Hey, can you get down? So you like the drama of it. <clears throat> but it's all, it's kind of, it's still curated. Like, it's all somewhat set up because they have to set the cameras up. Does it feel, does it feel real to you? Wait, what you're watching? Yeah. It does feel real. It is real. I guess in part it is. But, okay, but you think about it. The cameras are always in the right place. No, they're not. Sometimes, like, the camera people have to, like, chase after. Okay, you're right. Like... Okay. That's... <laughs> Sigh in the sink. Um, you can't touch it. It's too hot. It'll burn you. Make you go... <laughs> Okay, yeah, but okay, so the beginning of the scene, it's like, let's get all the cameras set up because we're all going to go meet and go fly on this private jet. <laughs> Mister! Hey, come here, come here. Go see Dad. You just, you just want to, do you want to play in the bathtub? Okay, go and jump in then. It's all wet. Maybe I'll take his top off and just play in there. His pants are still gonna. Well, okay, I'll take his trousers off as well. <laughs> this bit will be blurred. You can play in the bathtub. Okay, be careful because it's slippery. Why don't you sit down? Let me put the butt, put one of these mats down in there. I'll grab it. Your foot's on it though. Okay, arms out. Don't turn the water on, though. 
Uh oh. No, no, no. We're not turning the water. Thanks. Hey, wash your feet. Okay. But it's so you love the drama aspect of all these girls that get together and they all have these like toxic personalities. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, I'm fine with it getting wet. Okay, the whole point was that Kylie, who's what, 17? Yes. She sits, she just watches some girl going about her day and just has that playing in the background. Was she like actively watching it or just in the background? I think she was kind of watching it when I walked in her room. So like the way you watch the housewife stuff is you just you stick it on the iPad to the side while you're getting ready. You're not sometimes you'll stop and watch it, won't you? Yeah. When the drama gets so hot, you'll sit and watch it. And maybe it's the same with watching a vlog, like when someone ah, gets into a topic that you're really interested in. Or like I'm interested in, I would stop and watch it too. But you think actually this is the whole point. You think it's weird. I just don't think it's I don't think it's fun to watch. I wouldn't sit there and watch that. So you prefer the aspect of the drama. You like the drama. Versus Well maybe it's different also because they're from women. Okay, yeah, so what's Ruga? That's hot, dude. So you like the the fact that it's grown women? Do you look down on them when you're watching? You gotta be careful, honey. You don't want it too hot. Do I look down on people that watch it? No. I no. Okay. Do you look down on those women? Like, you guys are 45 years old and arguing about the fact that your friend didn't text you when you cut your nail. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. So you're kind of... You think you, there's probably, a, I do, I think this, when I'm, whenever I'm watching it with you, yeah, the drama's interesting. I also like look down on these people. I think, what the hell are you doing with your life that this is the kind of thing that is upsetting you and destroying you day by day? Yeah, I know. I do too. You do too? Yeah. But I still think it's fun, funny to watch. Okay, yeah, that, and... I think that's, I think it's funny to watch too, like when I come and join you. But you think the idea of watching some person, like me for example, you think the idea of watching this would be weird, don't you? Yeah. You can say it. <laughs> it's gonna hurt my feelings. Yeah, so yeah. Because it's weird to watch some person go about their real life doing this stuff. Be careful, Ruga. Ruga, why don't you sit, buddy? Can we just take your diaper off? Come here and I'll take it off. No point of having that on. This, this is the current state of the wax. It's not, not the best looking. I don't know if I fancy sticking that up my nose just yet, do you? Can we see what it looks like? I don't think it's hot enough. No, I don't think so either. I'm going to put more wax in as well. Are you going for a big? Honestly, you should just do it in the microwave and then pretend like you're doing it in here. <laughs> Just my favorite and put it on here. Yeah, that would be easier, wouldn't it? So, we can pretend that you. Well, I think. Shit, pretend? You mean be fake? Shit. <laughs> if that's submerged, maybe that will. I mean, I'm fine with putting it in the microwave. It's not like I would be faking that. I'll give this a go and see if that gets better. But the fact that it's a real person and it's not made for a television show, you think is weird? 
Oh. No, you, sorry. You say you think. Yeah, I think it's weird that <laughs> you do this too, but people set up cameras to then. From what they do? Yeah. Whereas the people on TV are getting filmed by a crew. Yeah, I can understand that. Like, the fact that you know that you're actively turning the camera on to film the thing that you're doing. But what if it's kind of like this, where neither you nor I are pandering to the camera, and it's just like the camera's on, and you go about being, doing whatever it is you're doing. Like, does, does it, does this feel weird to you? <laughs> Look at it. Does it feel weird that you're sitting here recording yourself doing this? Yeah, like you and I just having a conversation, but the camera's all in the background. This is stupid. Yeah. It does. <laughs> but that's... And there's a hair in it. I guess to you it's probably more weird because... Um, you don't ever, you're never in front of camera. But you're not pandering right now to the camera, are you? You're not. Am I in it? Yeah, you're in the corner. I can blur it. I'm like, I'm It's okay. It's all right if you're bored with the conversation. But you... Oh no, I was also listening when you were watching TikTok when I was going to sleep last night. It's like, the times that I would have been captivated by the video, or like interested, you started scrolling. Like you give a video... Hey, no, no, we're not coming up there, honey. A couple of seconds? No. No. <laughs> there, were, I, there were probably like of no, 50 we're not videos up. you watched. Get it down. You're going to get hurt. We're not climbing up there. You want to get is... out? Do you want to get out? Okay, let me get you a towel. I'll to get you Here a new go. diaper. I'll go get the mask. Here you go. Come here. Give a little bug bite. The new boiling water is working. What? I think so. I hope so. It says it normally takes two to three minutes. Yeah, it's been quite a long time now. Yeah, because the water just wasn't hot. Like, I mean, this is melting pretty well. I just probably should. Maybe we can do it at the side here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Do you want to put it in your nose or mine first? Yours. You want to do mine first? Yeah. yeah. How long do I have to wait for it to cool down before I stick it in my nose? Because... Rotate the tip of the... Did you see how much is you're supposed to have on there? No. Okay, so... I can't even more. While inserting the applicator into the nostril, slightly rotate the applicator and push the nose wing to get a better grab effect. Wait one to two minutes until the wax sets. Okay. Ruger, be nice to Lily. Is that is there's a lot on there? Yeah, I think that's too much now. That's too much. Oh, the spooky old tree. <coughs> Read. I've made a massive bloody mess of this. Three little bears, one with a light, one with a stick, one with a rope. <laughs> what? Oh, does Mama Bear? A spooky old tree. Do they dare go into the spooky old tree? <gasps> yes, they dare. Three little bears, one with a light, one with a stick, one with a rope. A twisty old stair, 
Do they dare go up that twisty old stair? Oh, <gasps> yes, they dare. What happened? No. He tried to eat them. He's like, he took his rope. Three little bears, one with the light, one with the stick, and one with the shivers. A giant key, a moving wall. Will the three little bears go through that wall? Do they dare go into that spooky old hall? Oh, ew, a spider. Oh, that's nice. Yes, they dare. Oh, look, it chopped the stick in half. Oh, and there's some mice. Okay. Three little bears, one with the light and two with the shivers. Yeah. Hang on, Daddy's busy. All right, I'm gonna do it. Great sleeping bear. Do they dare go over the great sleeping bear? Oh, what? It's dry. Oh my gosh. This is, this is pain in the buttocks. Do they dare? Well, they came into the tree, they climbed the stair, they went through the wall and into the hall. So of course they went over the great sleeping bear. Three little bears without a light, without a stick, without a rope, and all with the shivers. Okay, I'm going in. How will they ever get out of there? Oh. oh, a spider. Gross. Up a ladder through the floor, down the slide, and out the door. Three little bears running fast. Home again. Safe at last. Right. Now I wait two minutes or so. Yeah. Kylan said Hallie Sandberg or something like that. Hallie Sandberg. Never heard of her. Me neither. Hey, you need to get down. Never heard of him. No, we're not playing in the water right now. You just finished playing in the water. Mr. Lucas. Is Lila up here? Yeah. I was asking him. Oh, sorry. Hey, did you like your new books you got last night? <gasps> Don't touch that. Hot. Hot kitchen. Yeah, hot. Hey, did you... Did you like those new books you got last night? Yes, you did. The gorilla one was funny. Do you want to put yours in? Sure. Okay, I'm going to give you a lot. Please don't. <laughs> Are you going to get your books? Ready? Is it really hot? No. I'm going to do it quick. I don't want to do it. Oh, mine's. I get my eyes water. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Ruger, did you find oh. it? Ruger! Honey, you can't just pull those out of the wall. I'll just give mine a quick tug. Well, don't. Ow. Okay, I think... Why don't you do the other one, too? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some... Hey, can you go put those back? Leg first. See how that goes. Why? Um, I want to see how badly it hurts. How are you going to pull that off? What do you mean, how am I going to pull it off? Goodness sake. Well, actually, the video, this part of the video is going to be that, like, I do this to see how much it hurts because it hurts so much pulling it out my nose or, like, just fiddling it with it my nose. And I try this, and then this is the beginning of using the shaver to shave it off my legs because it hurts so much. Rookie Bear. Okay. Hey. You okay? Okay. Dude, trying to have conversations 
with the kid, with Ruger in the room, is so difficult, isn't it? Like not even just like for on here, but just in general, you and I. I think you and I have gotten into this flow of being able to have a conversation that is so separated by like a couple of minutes or by having a conversation with Ruger or helping him with something. And then we come back and dive in as if it never happened. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I need to give this a, another minute. Have you given yours a pull yet? No, I don't want to. No, oh, you just give a quick tug. No, no. Give me a quick tug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. You want me to do it? Not yet. Oh! That actually hurt. Yeah, you should try that on yours. I don't have any leg hair. I don't want to try this now. I'm kind of grossed, ah, no, by the fact that there's probably going to be loads of boogers on this one. Check out Ricky. Right. Change over the heads. Brother. What are you doing? Do you want to bring it up here? It's the Panasonic shaver, so we'll see. I'm gonna shave, I'm not doing that one again. Oh no! Interesting. I think I'm going to go with shaving my other nostril hair and see what the difference is like. Okay, let's go. No, not yet. Yeah, come on. No, I got to shave my other nostril hair. Where's my dick? The that one. The multi shapers come in more handy than I thought. You should see my nostril first. Grim. Love that sound. Huh? Do you think that sounded satisfying, Shay? What? Like nostril, cutting nostril hairs. No. Roger, come here. Here, it's, it doesn't need open. It's already open. Come here. Bring it upstairs. Yeah, honey. Ow. Bring it here. I'll open it up here. You can play with it up here. That was my fault. It's a hard puzzle. Can you just open it like this? Holy cow. Put, keep them in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, try to keep them in here. I think I'm going to do it with the not with the smelling salts. I'm going to get those. Right back. I feel like my nose is super free. Like I I just sniffed toothpaste. No, that's not right. It feels like I just brushed my teeth and then sniffed orange juice. All right, we've got some smelling salt. Add some water to the cotton ball. Okay. 
stop. Hey, stop. Put it away, okay? They're too messy. It's too messy. Okay? All right, are we pulling these out? Yeah, almost ready. Are you a bit impatient, aren't you? Yeah. You excited? No. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, can you put it back in here? The puzzle pieces? Oh, you want okay. lid on? Water to that. Okay. In. No. So, Secure lid and shake well. Thank you. Alright. Hi, Wilgies. Are you trying to put those up your nose like mummy and daddy? Hey. Well, yeah, no, don't touch it. That's ouchies. Oh, it's hot. Hey. I, I'm gonna use the smelling salts. Do you want to have a sniff? No, thank you. No? Uh, no, not since I'm pregnant. Ruger, you. Okay. All right. I'm gonna start pulling mine. No, let me do it. You want to do it? Don't touch those rookies. All right, you gonna come and do mine? Uh-huh. Bring us down. All right. Bro, you need to like try and move that. Can you get down please, Rookies? Yeah, you can't be in a video at this point. Hey, wait! Go see Lila. Hey, do you need a scent time out? You do? Because we don't need to be acting like that. Quit it. <laughs> Gotta go to time out. That'd be ideal. Okay, you come on this side and pull it. Okay. One. Ah! <laughs> I thought you were gonna count. Ew. I don't wanna do one. You have to do yours. Oh my gosh, eh? What am I doing? I'm trying to cover my face so that you can see. That is absolutely horrific. My nose, it feels like... You're bleeding? No, it feels like I brushed my teeth with toothpaste and then I drank orange juice through my nostril. All right, I'm gonna do a smelling salt. Right, my turn to do you. I don't want to do it. You have to. <laughs> I'm not doing the other one. My nose was so clear. Here. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> don't go up your nose, Ruger. There's still some left in there, so I think I have to do it again. I'm going to put another one in. All right, your turn. Do you want your glasses on still? Okay, let me get a good grip. Let's just go. I'll hit, let me get a good grip, okay. There's nothing on yours. <laughs> it didn't even go up. You have to do it again. No. There's nothing on yours. That was useless. Maybe I just don't have hair. <laughs> No, get down, Ruggie. All right, I'm... I got both. I got both my real quick. I'm doing a second load. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you can play with the toothbrush head. Did it right. take any nose hair off? Not for yours, no. You didn't get any out. You can do another one. Oh! <gasps> You want to do another one? And now, Ruger, don't touch that, please. Thank you, buddy. And no, no, not that either. 
the smelling salt cap. Why don't you get off? I just scratched my cross to you. I did that out. <laughs> <laughs> I know sometimes. Now! Like, I don't realize, and I'll watch my edit back, and I'll see that I scratch my crotch or something. Like, literally, just move the whole thing around. I said no. You need to listen. No, I said no. I know it's so hard when you want something. Yes, you have to listen to mommy and daddy though. Wait, uh, you want this bag? Okay. There's nothing in there, let's see. Sharp, is there? I think the sharp bits are already out. This. Uh, that's not sharp, he couldn't cut himself on that. Not to tell you you can't do something, Ruggy, but I don't think you could manage to cut yourself. Just go past. So it's not too bad as it's as it's dry, but once it's dry, do you do your other lasso? A while ago, I taught. Hey, can you get out the? Oh, I'll just blow you. I taught Rugi how to turn the camera on and off, like start recording on and off. Oh, you missed the button. And I can't have him around the camera now because that's all he does. Okay. I can't see anything. Oh, my glasses I'm stepping on. You can't see anything? No. And you step on your glasses. Oh, that's too much, Ollie. Do it. No, it's not. It's good for you. Ruga, what are you doing, bud? You don't read the instructions very well. No, no. I'm not gonna lie, I really like doing it this way instead of like, like I have it very generally planned out, the video, and then I just film this whole section and I'll cut bits out. Here, why don't we get down? That fit the story. Come here, Rooks. What? What did you just say? Oh, wait, let's take these off and then you could. Can... You like the vibrations of that, don't you? All right, you ready? Sure, yeah, sure. you should do swelling salts after. Oh, yeah. you're pregnant. You shouldn't do. Okay. Don't touch it, Rugies. Don't so I can see. Look at my leg hair one. That is hideous. Ruggie. Okay, you ready? No. Do it together. Am I not ready yet? It's not ready? I don't think so. Ready? No, no, you have to be I, ready. We'll do I, it together I, at the no, same time. No, I don't want to do it at the same time. You it's have not, to. No, it's going to get screwed no, up. No, because Stop. then you, that's no, not fair. No, it'll get screwed up in our hand. No, come on, do it together, please. I don't want to do it together. We have to. No, we you want don't. me to do it afterwards? Yes, we'll do it after. Okay, cap that this time. Three. Can you do them both at the same time? Yeah. Ruga. Can you just put him down for a second? Wait. Alright, you sit down. Here, take this. Take this. Ruga, we don't act like that, do we? Stop. Look at Molly. Keep getting like, blocked ears because I keep trying to breathe through my nose. Okay. One. Three, two. Wait, I'm counting one, two, three. You're counting? One. I know you're not going to do it on the right number. What? Just... Two, three, one. Okay, do it. You have to snot bubbles coming out. <laughs> you didn't. There's loads on that again. You didn't feel it. You didn't feel anything the first time. <laughs> no. Maybe I will this time though. I want to do. Can I put the drill end on yours and spin it? Can no. I? No. <laughs> What, Rook? <gasps> oh! Rookie! Come here. Ow! Crazy! <laughs> You're oh. alright. Wait, hey. hey tough <laughs> Hey, what did you trip on? What did you trip on? Did you run into this? I tripped on the towel, I think. You silly sausage! Okay. Oh, hey, be a tough boy. We don't need to cry. Where did it hurt? Where did it hurt? We know, we know it hurts, but you have to be tough. Let me kiss it. Come here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
She's like a walrus. <laughs> like two tusks. Let me give you a kiss. Oh man. My nostrils feel so weird now. You okay, brother? You got a red mark on your face. Should definitely disinfect. Oh, look at his little eye and his... Let me see. Let me see your face. Oh, see what sees. Where's your, um... Where's the shaver? I hear it. Hmm. You okay, honey? Where is it? Hmm. There it is. Good job. All right, hurry up. Let's go. Oh, you got it? Nice job. Ruger, you need to be careful. Be careful what he's doing. Oh. That hurt a little more. That hurt a little... There's still nothing on it. There's a lot on that one. Dude, your nose has a stoke. Did you wiggle it around in there? Yeah. You're still covered in <laughs> hairs. What are your hairs made out of? I don't know. I'm not doing like, that again. Look at mine versus yours. It's like all that came out of yours was anything that's in the pores. Yeah, it's like nothing on yours. Okay, well... They sting though. Okay, Rugi, you gotta be careful, sweetheart. No, yuck. It's, um... No, no. Oh, you can press that button. Let's disinfect our nostrils. With what? The alcohol. Where's the oh. buzzer? Yeah. I'm gonna look like a pleb now with, I can't put your reactions in because you had no reaction yeah, because nothing came out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that, Ruggie. Hey, that's a no, no, okay. Have a swig of this, Ruggie. Maybe you're not giving me enough wax. I, you said I gave you too much last time. I thought you did. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. That is... Mm, yeah, up, Ruggie. See, that's no reaction from you. Stop burning! That's what I'm saying. You didn't take out any hairs. Mine is on fire. Hey, can we get down, sweetheart? Come here. Let me see your head. Oh, look. Do you see the red mark on your head where you fell? Look. Ouch. What a tough boy. Yeah. You're so tough. So brave. Oh, what? No, we're going to get down. Do you want one of those stickers? My nose is watering. Oh. Here you go. Sorry. Here, do you want it? You can play with it. Do you want this sticker? Do you want me to put it on your face? Like a mustache? I must ask you a question. Whoa! Dude, my nose is feeling fresh. Mine feels clean too. How? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I still, let me use that Panasonic thing. I just got my couch in. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta move it to one side or the other, don't you? <laughs> Go. Ruger, what are you doing? Oh, you mean you want to use the Panasonic Multi Shape three thousand? This looks way better than the other one. <gasps> Ow! Cut me! No, you just pulled it. I did the same. I'm crying from this. What's your mother doing? I don't know. What have you got? 
Your mustache. Okay. Your puzzle. Well, that was that was very fun and very exciting. What's the problem, bro? Men are kind of wussies. You, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not taking anything from you, considering you didn't even do it. I've given birth without medication before. Oh, that's your excuse for not doing this. This hurt way more than that. <laughs> yes. What is it? You want me to sit? Okay, can I turn off the camera and then I'll come sit with you? Okay, give me one second, Rugis. All right, I'll be back in a bit. I quite enjoyed that. No, I mean, not like pulling their nose hairs, but doing it with the missus. I want to be very clear that I wasn't overreacting too much. Um, she just didn't get any nose hairs out. Honestly, what was worse than pulling the nose hairs was the alcohol in the nostrils. That was worse. But I've been getting... This is way too personal now, isn't it? I've been getting... I could get zits on the inside of my nose really easily from where I like pluck hairs. And so I'm going to have to do that swabbing like a couple of times a day, which is not ideal. What time is it? 10.15. That video's done. It's going to be... It's going to be a lot to edit through because we don't have specific shots, but I have a pretty good plan. You want to hear the very quick run through of the story? We have the hook. I see that I want to get rid of nose hairs, so I put it in my nose and then I'm not ready to pull it out. Then I put it on my leg um, and realize how painful it is, so then I use the shaver to cut it off, which is where I take off the um, toothbrush head and change it out, which... Let me finish the story first. I then shave that off I then try the nose trimmer and look at the difference between or at least see that it gets a lot of the hairs and it's not painful. I then am about to pull it with my hand and Shay says that she wants to do it, which I think is a... Let me finish the story. So she pulls it out and I think as we're leading up to that point, uh, I have some kind of message in there which is that like, you can make things that aren't meant to be enjoyable, enjoyable with the right company, maybe. Because I initially had the ADHD brain. First thing, yes, the point of no return, which is where we want to show the viewer that we're getting into it as soon as possible. Because you have the hook, which will involve clips of like doing it <clears throat> but you don't want the, the viewer waiting for like 10-15 seconds before they see that you're actually doing the thing that the hook tells them you're going to be doing I find so I want to get that into that as soon as possible even though you could make up part of the story of the difficulty in getting the, mac the wax to melt and then get it onto the but that's all boring stuff right that's not why someone is watching the video and then we move into the climactic choice in the part, the banana, which is where we move away from the difficulties that we've had in the challenge and toward the actual goal again. So in this case of actually pulling out the nose and seeing what the reaction is, the payoff for the viewer. I remember on the, so what you would see is yesterday's video, which I recorded on Friday and now it's Monday. Um, I had the idea that it would be kind of fun to do it with a drone, so attach a drone to it and fly it, but explaining all of that adds in far too much, and I think it gives the impression that you're doing it just for the content, because I wouldn't do that for myself. Even though doing it for the video, I would find it fun. That's a lot to try and get across in a few seconds. And then had the idea of, of attaching it to an RC car. And then I thought the better idea would be to have, it seems way more natural to have Shay do it. And I knew that she wasn't going to do it on a three, two, one count. She was just going to do it whenever she felt like doing it to catch me off guard. So I got that to edit. And then 
I should book in my cryotherapy session. Oh. The, just to be clear, this isn't something I do regularly. It might be something I want to do regularly, but it's... Um, it is... something we're doing for two more videos. I would like the idea of doing a sauna every day. That would be sweet. I would like to do that. I'm not going to lie. I would really like to do, to have some sort of partnership with Restore here, where like, it's pretty easy. You book everything through the app and you just go in at that time and I imagine just walk straight in. So I've got two sessions here that actually expire two days from now. So I don't have to do it today, but I, I think it'd be a good idea to do it. The other thing is my parents arrive next Tuesday. I, I mentioned this the other day. And they're staying until Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas. And I don't want to film during that process unless my dad would like to see the whole process in which we'll make a video. So I want to get as much done now. I'm ready to put out during that week. <clears throat> I also, this, I don't know if this is right or not, but I, from a work ethic standpoint, this is a terrible idea. From as like authentic as I am, as I want to be across social media, I don't believe, I don't really love the idea that you should always post at, you know, each day at a certain time, or like I always want to post three videos a week. I would like to post three videos a week, but I don't always have the ideas and I'm not always, I don't want to force myself to be making content that I'm not, that I won't enjoy making, that I'm not proud of putting out. And that's why I think I've I've never really, aside from these pod vlogs, because they're a, a daily thing, these go out at a certain time. But for something, and these aren't really particularly creative, are they? It's more like my TikToks that are my creative outlet. And so for that, I don't want to have a, a structure that I have to abide by in that process in terms of, okay, I have to film this day. I have to plan it this day. I would like to be openly creative to that process. Which actually brings me to a point that I put in my note here. I don't know if you've heard of the guy called Dodford on YouTube, TikTok. I actually haven't watched any of his videos yet, but I saw a podcast that he was on and he creates, I guess like documentary style videos. But in this interview, he had <clears throat> and I don't want to take it out of context, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, and I may have the wrong end of the stick, so take this with a pinch of salt, and as I do a bit more research, I'll share more of my thoughts, but it's something that I really believe. So for him, he was saying, I don't look at my retention metrics, I don't find where viewers lost interest, uh, I make the video that I want to make, and I put that out there, because I wanted to do it that way. Now, on one part, you would say that's great because you're just making the video you want and you're putting it out there. But I, I in part think that way, but I also look at the side of the things which are... I'm trying to make a video for people to enjoy, right? What's, what's the point in making it, this video, if it's not for other people to enjoy? Otherwise, I would just make a video and just keep it on my computer. So I want to make this video for people to enjoy. But if I find that a strategic decision I've made at a certain point in the video is something that people don't actually enjoy and it's just me that enjoys it, I then question, do I really, really like this? What's, what's a higher priority to me? Doing it this way or finding out how people really want it and doing it that way? So for me, it's a learning process of how do I like doing it? How does the viewer like to receive it? And how do I want to compromise on doing that? Because 
And this is where I feel like it's almost like an attack on Dodford. I don't know him. It's this is may well be out of context from his video. But if you create something that you think it's just the way you want to do it and you put it out there, you think that's perfect, right? You think you have everything nailed down and that there's nothing to learn, right? Like, because in your head, you think that it's perfect the way you want to do it. But what if there's something you didn't think about before that you could now learn and factor in and realize, actually, I would prefer to do it this way that also happens to make people enjoy this section more versus just doing it my way that I thought I really enjoyed. Yeah. And so the question I ask myself is like, wouldn't you, that I've written down, wouldn't you want to better understand how to tell a story? Like you get feedback from every single video. Why wouldn't you use that to learn how to better tell a story? Like for me, I would like, there's a part of me that would really like the setup want to be something abstract that happens. If I give you an example here. In movies, this, this happens all the time. So like Jason Bourne, The Bourne Identity. It's not Jason Bourne, The Bourne Identity. But at the beginning of the first movie, he wakes up on a boat and he has to try and figure out who he is. Hang on. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, thank you, Ricky. You want to do this? Yeah, you want to have yours? Say cheers. That tasty. <laughs> Took a little bite and shoved the rest of it in his mouth as soon as he tasted it. You can have another one tomorrow. We have we can have every we can have one every day until Christmas now. That tasty. Yeah, G Ma and Papa got that for you. You have to say thank you when they get here next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we're not anymore. You only get one one every day. One a day. Keeps the doctor away. Um Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so he wakes up on this boat and he has to try and figure out who he is. And he gets to this lockbox and this lockbox gives him information that tells him that he's this trained killer and he's now trying to, his new goal is to escape this life. I don't think that works on TikTok. Like that's, that's what you would call the setup want is his initial setup want is to find out who he is, right? So he wants to find out who he is gets the lockbox, realizes that he's a trained killer, but the, uh, sorry, realizes who he is, but the catch is that he's a trained killer and he wants to get away from this life. And now you have everything that should fit into what the hook of the video is. But on short form content, you don't have, you don't get afforded the luxury of setting up the story. You have to go straight into it, in my opinion. Because if you spend this, even if that's 10, 15 seconds, that's nothing to do with the hook. And so people are going to lose interest. Now, I would like to do all of this, and I'm sure there's a clever way to do it. But I'm also happy with the way I'm doing it right now, the way I've adapted what I'm doing, that this setup want isn't something abstract that sets up the whole story, which then relates to the hook. The setup want is immediately getting into the hook. I don't know if you can tell that I'm excited about this stuff. Okay. Check this out that I ordered on TikTok shop. My first ever purchase on TikTok shop. Although I should say my first ever TikTok shop purchase. It's an eye massager, massager. Wet wipes, instructions. I'm sorry, who called the fashion police?
Ladies and gents, I, I feel like Kanye. All right. So this is meant to help with dark wrinkles, not dark wrinkles, dark circles. This is the wireless intelligent eye massager. In line with the human face contour curve of glasses frame shape design. Sh shape design is shape, no space, capital D design. Where is it? Right above my finger. Look at that. Unique and comfortable shape design combined with vibration. Pulse current, hot compress, red color, again, color, no space, capital E, external, physiotherapy. Okay, all right, that's enough. But I'm thinking I use this every day and see what kind of effect it gives us. Also, when you see the instructions say how to boot instead of how to turn on, you know that these have come from a sweatshop. Look at that micro USB charger, swanky. All right, so we'll give those a go a bit later. I guess I could just give those a go while I edit, can't I? Um, yeah, let me get the footage over and then we'll start editing this video. Maybe wear these at the same time. We'll see. All right, I'm having a look at the, the socials automation, which I think I'm gonna switch from calling it socials automation to social SEO. I think that's the term for it. <clears throat> if you don't know what that is, essentially it's, it's taking this video, making whatever kind of clips from it, editing bits, putting them into a Google Drive folder, and then having a Zapier automation that picks up from that folder and delivers it to the nine different social accounts that I have set up. Now, I think social SEO is a better name for it because essentially the goal is to create as big of a footprint of Oliver, of Odd Right as possible, um, so that when people uh, see my name or see my content, they think, who is this guy? And then maybe they get interested enough that they go and find me on, like in this video on YouTube. Now, while you could be like, that's kind of sneaky, that's like a, a trick or a hack. I mean, yeah, it, it, I think it's meant to be. It's meant to be a way of, of getting your name out there. It's essentially me just marketing the product, which is this YouTube channel which is then meant to filter you over into the TikToks to watch those videos and hope that you enjoy them because obviously that's my main goal for those videos. But the automation piece, the Zapier, is running, but it's also not running. And I've noticed that it hasn't posted anything in four days. And I keep getting different errors and I'm not sure what it is. So, it's a, part of my goal with this is to get it to a place where I can create I don't want to say create a course, but make this thing available for you to be able to do. Because it's, it's taken me so long to set up. And I wouldn't want you to have to go through that same process of trying to learn how to set it up. So if I can create it as something in like a plug and play tool that you could follow my video or tutorial on it, on how to use it, you, you pay, get access to everything to set it up yourself. And then you have it running for yourself. I I mean that more from a case of, like, you could say, Oliver, just do it for free. Like, just give it away for free. But I think that that would just be a stupid idea. Like, yes, I want to help you, and my way of setting this up and then making it available is a form of helping. It's like looking back at, let's say, Casey Neistat. When he was daily vlogging, his first, like, 100 million views he didn't monetize. And on one part, he says he didn't monetize them because he wanted to make sure that he was doing it because he enjoyed it and not for the money, which is fair. 
But then he also looks back and he's like, that was a dumb decision. And I agree, like, why wouldn't you, in a capitalist society, why wouldn't you make money where you can make money as long as it's in a fair way of doing it? Like, I've put in the work to set this up. Why wouldn't you make it a product that, that people can then purchase? Um, yeah, I don't know what the problem is here. But it's essentially got me thinking uh, the other day of all the different types of content I can produce for this. And this is where it gets interesting. So I'll probably mention this in quite a few videos coming up, but I would, it would be cool to set up. So like you as the viewer, if you're interested in this content and you like, let me just share some of the ideas that I'll, maybe instead of that, I'll show you some that I created the other day that I think are, are funny. Like I showed you the ones at the end of the other episode of like speed and someone else reacting. But these ones I think are pretty funny. So if I share my screen, like this one. Hello, you gentle sausage. Please respect me. You don't respect me, I think. If a hippo cared about oral hygiene, would it brush those big ones at the front side to side and go up, or would it brush them up and down? All the time, this question is stupid questions. Right, like it's it's just stupid. Hello, I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm top journalist. I'm here in Carrington to do interview with. Zucchini of Zootopia, good morning. Why you never give the proper answer? Uno segundo, por favor. All these previous videos that I thought were kind of... And then from there, you go into actually like an actual topic that I want to talk about. Like a clip from the vlog. I think those are funny. Here's another one. Maybe. So we gonna watch it again. Let me just brainwash everything that I just watched before that. Let me brainwash it. I don't remember. Why does it make so we gonna me nervous? It's essentially like taking... Imagine you run a business. It's like taking your business model and adapting your business model. So one day you know it works. The next day... Let's try something. I have no idea if it's gonna work, what it's gonna look like. But let's give it a go. That's how this feels. I don't know what I've done with the text there. Obviously, that's stupid. The placement of it. But I think those are funny. I think that kind of thing. And then I had so many more ideas, which is like taking different parts from like a... That guy from Barstool Sports. Caleb Presley, I think his name is. Parts from his interview. Or like this new guy, Bevo. Massive front teeth English dude that does cooking, does eating videos. And he swallows like a whole potato in like two bites. But I just think it could be, it could be really fun to just take, let's say, let's say you see a video on TikTok and you're like, I could merge that with a part that I saw from Oliver's pod vlog. So the goal is that like you, for example, would make an edit that you think is funny or cause you wanted to make it. You drop it into a Google drive folder we take some time each pop vlog or as like an extra video, review those. And as long as they're not going to get me completely cancelled, actually, that would be funny. Not getting cancelled, but dealing with that would be kind of funny. <clears throat> what am I trying to say? That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just checking that you haven't put like a penis in the video and then I post it automatically. But then I take those videos after reviewing them put them into the drive that automatically posts everything to these fan accounts. And then we watch those fan accounts grow. And the video that has the most views in that period wins X amount of dollars. And I, I have a really cool idea again on that, which is like, let's say something like very early days. And this, this is not a place to be bragging. I probably shouldn't even be mentioning this just because of how early it is. But if Panasonic want to sponsor like this part of the pod vlog, I think that could greatly elevate their brand in this creator space that they're like sponsoring the prize money for each creator each month. Like we could do it each week or each month. And it's like that competition is funded by Panasonic and they're like camera range or something, you know, or, you know, another brand. I think that could be huge. I, I really like that idea. And 
Like, obviously, it would be good for me because it all leads back to me, but it would be a fun thing to do. But I think until we get that set up, if there's a part of you that's like, I want to make like, this part of the video, I had an idea, let's make something funny and submit it. Maybe I'll leave like a Google Drive link below. And it becomes a bucket that I check at the moment once a week. Or if you if you do leave a video, drop a comment and I can check it. I felt like that would be really cool. So I guess I have to go and re-edit these ones. Because <laughs> the text is all over the face. But yeah, what do you... I don't know what you think of that. I quite like that idea. I think that's funny. What is going on here? All right, well. This is this is the part. I, I, you know what's difficult for me right now is the competing priorities that I have. I want to get this Panasonic video done today. I also want to get, you know, I need to go and get the cryotherapy and solar video done today. So I need to kind of plan out those. But also I've realized I need to start putting in more time to these edits that go to this social SEO automation thing. Because I need to start making better content to drive it back to this. Because I think that's the way to grow this versus the thumbnails just showing up on the homepage on YouTube. That's not the way to grow it. So what should our priority be? Let's let's figure this out right now, shall we? So we have social SEO. We have the Zapier to fix. We have edit nose waxing. And we have plan, cryo, and sauna. So I, I think we edit this one. We do that. And I've got some videos ready, so let's do fix Zapier. And then social SEO comes last. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Let's, um, I'm gonna start editing the nose wax video and I think the next thing we'll do is we'll plan out this. So I'll see you to plan that out shortly. All right, I don't have very long. <clears throat> Hi, Judah. Hello, Judas. Okay, I don't have very long, but we are going to go do the thorough cryotherapy I leave in about 10 minutes oops never mind <laughs> uh, the nose waxing video just posted is it like 15 or 20k in the last hour which is very good so very pleased with that and hoping that that is a, a good sign for this long-term Panasonic thing kind of doing this as a good well goodwill gesture so the cryotherapy I think we why do I want to try it? Because I uh, want to try it because saw it after sauna. What is my point of no return is obviously trash pens. Point of no return is getting in and it's going to be stupidly cold. No doubt. Um, what things are in there? I think... What's going to... I think obviously I... Uh, uh, sit to stay warm. I don't know. Let's let's just see what happens, I guess. But I'm. what am I doing now? I'm trying to think of something clever. Maybe like... I take a hot drink and put that outside. Like next to my bag. 
or I think back to the sauna. Um, I'm thinking along the lines of how do I make it more entertaining versus like here's here's the easy video right crisis point is uh just i feel frozen like too cold so it's like oh do i keep going or get out and the banana is instead that i do jumping jacks Okay, but that's not, like I think this crisis point is, is pretty obvious. So what can I do? I think we can also add in here the nose hair. I think that's what I need to be doing is linking, somehow linking my previous videos into the video that I'm doing. Like no, not having any nose hair now is gonna make it feel even colder. Nose hair makes it feel even colder. So what can we think about as a banana? We think about uh, What about what if the crisis point is I feel frozen and staying still uh, made me feel warmer? But that but that's like actually how people freeze. But that's actually how people freeze. Yes, I do. I'm going to go see Rugi. I just want to say hi to Rugi and switch shirts because i'm gonna have to wear these the other my other shorts that i've got are in the wash the black ones so green and burgundy didn't really go anyway i had a really good idea uh i feel frozen like i want to stay still but i brought my needle mat to try in a sauna and i'm going to use that because it makes you feel like you have sunburn so it's not going to be maybe i'll put like a try jumping jacks needle mat yes 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 and then we're going to do the sauna afterwards which is uh, i'm going to be able to like word that that as i'm in that sauna i'm longing to be back in the cryotherapy I'm very interested to try this, see what it's like. There's part of me that wants to take a hot drink and at least sit that outside. To kind of, I should be leaving any minute. Kind of like something that's wanting, that's needing to pull me out. I think I'll get it. And if I want to add that into the story, I can. So I'll just go and get a coffee cup, whether that's one I have upstairs. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'll just... I haven't, I've never shown you how I pack my bag. It's not too much to it, but that seems like... 
you know, a piece of content that people like watching. So, what am I going to take for this video? We'll take, probably won't need an FPV drone. Why is that bent? Whoops. Alright. So I'm going to pack the ZV-1. Not in love with this camera, actually. I'm just using it because I have it. We'll take the mics. Um, take some extra batteries, of course. Some more batteries. And then my tripod I use for this is actually just a really cheap... It's like more like a phone type of tripod. But actually, it's pretty good, especially for a light camera like this one. Um, I've been through a couple of these different types of tripods, and this seems to be the best one. If I remember, um, I'll add it as a link below. Because I, you know, if you do short form content, even if it's from a phone or from a small camera, I would actually recommend that one. Um, I think that's it. I don't need lights. I might get, I might take a fan. Like a small fan because this camera overheated last time. And I thought in the sauna, oh, and I need the needle mat. I thought in the sauna, we could use, could just make it into like a podcast type thing. So this needle mat is going to be an absolute banger of a banana. I'm so glad I came up with that idea. So you can come with me. So we've got the camera we need. I've got my phone. They've got water there. I should show that I've been chugging water all day. I might have to get a few extra clips of that just to... I actually have been drinking a lot of water. But I think for the sauna, I'll play into the fact that I had a bad headache afterwards because I just didn't drink enough water. Cool, let's go. Okay, darling, I, yeah, I'll see you at the place. <sighs> Round two. This is so toasty having just been in that cryotherapy chamber. This is so nice. You know, this gives me, uh, it reminds me of being younger, being out on a cold day when it was snowing and then coming in and having a warm bath. This is what it feels like after that cryotherapy thing. Ooh, yeah. Hundred and thirty degrees for fifty seven minutes longer. That should go up. It's already set to hundred and fifty, so I guess we'll just wait. Um Yeah, sorry this is in vertical format, but 
it fits a lot better than doing it in a different format for the um i have to do it in this format for the tiktok because it's just not wide enough for the uh tiktok if i do it horizontal i'm, I'm going to change position slightly Turn off the light, ooh. All right, so for dude, the, the cryotherapy one, I just did not stand a chance of doing the needle bat and stuff. One, because there's a person outside watching you the whole time, which to begin with, I thought was just super weird. I was like, why, why are you gonna watch me the whole time? Not watch me the whole time. Why are you gonna stand outside the whole time? And it's, there's not much that would have prepared me for how cold that was in there. What's up with the colouring? All right, let's change you as well. Hang on a minute. <clears throat> Just turned on to manual mode instead of auto. Seems a lot better. Yeah, I can't believe the temperature in there. Um... Yeah, you couldn't have prepared me for that. Looks like I have the white balance set to auto. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that was something else. I just did jumping jacks the whole time. I don't know if the video captured any of it. Um, all right, got some topics to talk through today. I thought this, this would actually be a cool thing to have what is up with the colours? I don't know, but it's kind of nice. Do like a vlog section in here. I don't know if I... I think I mentioned this when I was replying to a comment to you, Dustin, this morning. Like have... If I do this once a day, for example, like this section becomes like a podcast where it could quite literally be just me talking about a subject that you know one of you has brought up or it could actually be a podcast right like where i have airpods or something and i can see you on a screen here and we actually have a conversation while i'm in the sauna that might be quite nice but until then we have just me so stuck with the boring um this so this topic here is is pretty interesting to me actually so the idea that there will be things in your life that you will never experience so if i give you an example i'm 32 and i've been with my wife since my second year of college like right at the beginning of my second year and so some things that most guys have gotten to experience are um, living on their own or like being single through all of college living on their own after college like the dating world in their 20s and I, I don't look at that and think oh I wish I could you know do that I missed out on all of that not at all I but I think about that in terms of like, what would my life be like if it was just me and I had all the time in the world. Like imagine that I was still working a nine to five at that point, which I obviously was. Wake up, go to the gym or whatever, do my work. And then you have the whole evening, the whole evening to just do what you want to do. How different would I be as a person if that were the case? Again, I don't look at that and think, I wish I could have done that. I wish that was me. I just think it's interesting that I'll never experience that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna go through topic by topic that I have written down. And I've been writing these down for the last couple of days and I've just never, haven't gotten to them recently. So uh, one of the things is I could post so much content on social media like, so let's say I do a side quest today. 
and I edit it later today or tomorrow and then I post it the day after, I could so easily have like at least five stories that go up each day about that process or something that happened in like while I was shooting that. And I think to myself, why don't I? Is it because I'm disorganized? And I think really it's just that I'm not that bothered of posting bits for the sake of posting bits. Now, there's one side of me that thinks, oh, well, that's actually pretty selfish because you have all this content that pay people may want to see, but you're just not posting it because you don't want to post it. But then it's having to remember that actually it's just me doing all of this and there's so much going on in my mind that there's only so much I can focus on at one time. And the idea of editing a TikTok, like, so I'll, this is kind of the process. <clears throat> if I go out and shoot a TikTok today, I'll have all of these bits of footage that I could post, which should be like a prelude, should, should be like a um, get, get people hyped up, ready for what's to come but i'm I, i'm not in, i'm more interested in just not getting through the video but i'm more interested in editing the video the way i want it to and then i just want to post it and from that point i then just want to move on to the next thing instead of going back through the footage taking out segments and being like oh that's a cool story i could put up you know and this one and this one and this one it would be quite nice if like let's say I get to a point where I could afford to pay someone else, that they could sift through the footage, find the different bits, and have more of a system in place where, like let's say I shoot today, and instead of me wanting to edit and then post later today, that person, that editor, that whoever that is, could go back in, take out all the clips and, and set up the automation for it to post at certain times. That would be ideal. But, I don't know, I, I just find it annoying. I wonder if it's because I'm just not that, I'm more interested in making the full video, like finishing out the process, than I am interested in putting out content for growth and likes and follows and that kind of stuff. Which kind of leads on to an interesting point that I don't know if you're watching this and you're thinking, I wish I could grow on social media. I wish I had a video go viral and just gain tons of followers. And I promise you that having one video go viral and bring in tons of viewers is unless that video is the exact type of video you want to be creating from there on, that's not, that's actually going to be a bad thing. So if we look at my follower count, for example, let's just say it's at 500,000. If a brand is looking at my content and trying to work out, do we want to partner with this person or not? One of the first things they're going to see is from a judgmental perspective is, does this person outperform their follower count? Now, I think this is kind of, I believe this is irrelevant on a platform like TikTok where it doesn't matter how many followers you have. You could have a video that, you know, you could, you could have 10 million followers and it could still only do a couple of thousand. You could have a hundred followers, less than that, and videos do go viral. Um, but a pretty good metric, if you're a content creator, a pretty good metric for a brand when they come to your channel is to see, are their videos outperforming their follower count? Which is essentially saying, your videos are hitting new audiences every time, as well, it, or, as, well as or in addition to your current audience. While on paper that like seems very logical and is, it makes a lot more sense on YouTube but on TikTok, it doesn't doesn't make any sense because when you look at a video that does well, 
98% plus of that audience is going to be from the For You page and only 2%. So let's say it's the best way, what's the most clear way I can do this. Let's say you get a million views on a video and you have a million followers. It's more than likely going to be that 980,000 of those views are from the For You page, so just random people seeing your video, and only 20,000 of those are going to be from your follower count. That's, that seems crazy, doesn't it? That seems just ridiculous to say, but that's the reality. So, I know when you start making content, and I was the same, you think, I'll just make any type of video and every type of video that I think will get views. And it's like, imagine, again, easiest way for me to share this is with my content, that I have my style of video, right, which is the storytelling style, but they're equally video ideas that I have that I think could go disgracefully viral. But if I start putting that on my page and that's not the normal type of video, number one, it's probably not gonna bring in as many followers. And number two, those followers it does bring in, yeah, that it does bring in are not, they were interested in that style of video, that type of video, that video. They're not particularly, they don't know that they're not interested in what you normally produce. So I would say, and that's why people say to create a niche on your social media platforms so that you're only talking about one topic over and over again so that when someone joins your channel, they know they're gonna get a video about tech or health. And I've mentioned this before, I, I have a different view on running a niche. If we see social media going in the direction of we only want to follow people who are raw and authentic, seeing them only talk about one topic is by itself inauthentic, right? Because that's only such a small part of their life. It may be their main interest, but that's such a small part of their life. When actually, if you want to get a better understanding of who that person is, you should be following, oh, sorry, that person should be sharing their thoughts, comments, the way they do things on anything in their life. When I think raw or authentic, I mean, I think it's not curated. So like these TikToks, as much as I'd like to think that they're a little bit more raw and authentic, they're still curated. They're still edited. There's still parts that are taken out. It doesn't mean that I'm telling a different story than what happened or turning myself into a completely different person, but it's still made up in such a way for people to be able to enjoy it more. Yeah, even something as simple as taking out pauses. Oh, I'm starting to feel it now. I've got 42 minutes left. We're up at 140 degrees. You're rising quite quickly, aren't you? Oh, you're not rising. You're just fluctuating. I'm starting to sweat as well. All right, what's next, Billy boy? I think we're seeing this more and more about being in or out of touch with reality. Uh, seeing influencers and big time creators being out of touch with reality and I think it's very easy to say that someone is out of touch with reality. But like when we stop to think about it, we're all, what 
it's to say we're all living in the same reality, the same understanding of things. Like let's take a um, hundred dollar bill, for example. Let's take it for me, I think, I think that's a, you know, a, a pretty decent sum of money. But if I get given a hundred dollars, that's not going to change anything about my life, really. If I was given a hundred dollars in college, that may, that may, you know, change my life for a week or two. But if you give a hundred dollars to a homeless person, that's, tr that's a huge change in their life. And so that means that each, <sighs> comparing myself to a homeless person, a homeless person has a different reality, a perception of life to that of what I do, right? And then you imagine someone who has put in ridiculous number of hours, has worked incredibly hard, and has, we'll call it, made it, where money is not an issue anymore. A hundred dollars is chump change. A hundred dollars is probably a tip at a, an easy tip at a restaurant for someone like that. And so their reality of what a hundred dollars is, in terms of value, is very different. Now, are we, are we really going to say that that's wrong? That that billionaire should not live in this world where a hundred dollars doesn't mean the same, it doesn't have the same value as what a hundred dollars to a homeless person? No, I think that's ridiculous. I think we put ourselves in our different realities and then we choose to live in those different realities. What's the example I gave here? That's right. If, let's say I start earning a lot more money and I say that I don't have time to do Amazon returns so I just don't return them and I just paid for it even though I don't want it and I end up keeping it but I'll never use it. It would be very easy to say, Oliver, you lost touch with reality. You don't understand reality anymore. But everyone else, let's say who's in the same, we'll call it tax bracket or earning the same money as me at that point in life would understand that and their reality would be the same. I'm droning on because I'm bloody hot, but if you look at a billionaire, all billionaires probably have a similar reality to each other, right? They see things the same way, they have the same perceptions, but you or I are going to look at a billionaire and think, no, the way you're thinking doesn't make any sense to us. You and I can't understand it because we've never been in that position. Whereas all of them in that position, they understand it from those perspectives. They have a different way of looking at life. And we're saying that's bad. I mean, I understand in parts, people can be out of touch with reality and it, and it is just a bad thing that they see things the way they do. But I think I'm starting to question when I see someone like Dave Portnoy recently, uh, he started slating people because they were saying that Dave and his team on his podcast are out of touch with reality because they're saying that people who can't afford to live with their nine to five are just being ridiculous. They need to go out, like work harder, earn more money change um, jobs, whatever it is. And of course, everyone called them out of touch reality, but you also didn't see how much work someone, not that I'm a freaking Dave Portnoy bummer, but you didn't see how much work he put in to get himself where he is. And he has chosen to live a different reality. He's chosen to live in a reality where he can spend money like it doesn't matter. And to him, he did all the hard work to get him where he is. And so because it worked for him, he's essentially just telling other people like, just work harder, just do more, just do something different. Because to him, it makes sense. Now, there are lots of nuances, but if you look at it in a black and white frame, it's either you keep doing the same thing and you keep struggling to survive, or you just do more of whatever it is to get you further. 
which I fully believe in. And I guess, hopefully I don't f say this like I'm, I think I'm on a pedestal, but I worked, I did all my social media stuff for the last eight years on top of working full time. Now you, while I haven't made it, <laughs> I have got myself to a position where I don't have to work a nine to five anymore. Dude, my back is sweating like no one's business. And so I'm in a position where I say, if you want to achieve your dreams and your goals, you have to work harder. You have to, um, you have to find a way to make things happen. I'll tell you what, I actually wasn't planning on quitting my job when I did quit my job. I always told myself that I would have at least three consecutive months where I make where I make enough money that supersedes what I was earning from my previous job. Now I had lots of months where I'd earn far more than what I earned in my normal job, but then I might have like two, three months of dry spells of really earning not very much at all. But it got to a point in my job where the lady I was working with, I mean, she straight up said to me, will you have my back in the coming months? And I said, what do you mean? I said, well, yeah, what does that even mean? She goes, we've got lots of work coming down the pipeline. We're, I'm expecting long nights and weekends for all this work. And I thought about it. Uh, sorry, I didn't have to think about that. Immediately, it was no, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. Number one, our job is project managers. If we see a risk, our job is to mitigate that risk, not just put more work on ourselves and not do what our actual job is to mitigate that risk. That was the first thing that I was just like, oh. but, she, but the lady I was working with was that I'd say late boomer generation. And it was, you kill yourself for your employer and you are lucky to be employed. And I, I remember my reply to her was, are you asking me to sacrifice the two, three hours a night I have with my son for us to do something that we have the foresight to mitigate right now? Essentially, the answer was yes. And my choice after, you know, thinking about that for a little bit and thinking, how do I, how do I deal with this? My choice was... I either stop doing what I love, which is content, and just give up on it so I can keep doing my job and keep someone happy. Or I cut that out that I hated doing anyway, and I go all in on the thing that I'd been doing for the last eight years and had been getting myself ready for, for this moment. And, you know, we've done it, we've made the leap, and... I wasn't, thankfully I'd gotten myself to a position when that unexpected time arose that I had to make that choice. Now, if, if I hadn't been making anywhere close to some of the income months that I'd had, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I mean, for the safety of my family, because I mean, the main concern is making sure that I have enough food, housing, shelter, and all that kind of stuff for my family that I, I probably would have to have stopped what I was doing with content or at least reduce it by a huge amount. So yeah, it was, it was a tough decision, but I'm very thankful that I'd got myself to a place that I'd been able to make the decision and that it has, has worked out the way it has. That doesn't mean that it was all luck. That means that it was a lot of hard work. But you make you make of your life what you make. I don't know what the fuck was that. What I'm trying to say is the effort you put in is is what you'll reap. Is what you'll get out. Bloody hell! I can't think. Can I? Maybe the sauna podcast series isn't the best idea. 143 Fahrenheit, 31 minutes left. Whew. 
This was a an interesting topic I saw. Let me get a video of the sweat. Hold on. Salty. I feel silly. I feel silly getting those shots because it's like, um, I'm filming myself doing the things that I need to do. But yeah, it feels, feels kind of fake, but you have to for the video because if, if I don't film them, then I don't have those parts of the story to tell and it doesn't make any sense. So they have to be done. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the thing I have written down, you don't need to be better than your best, just be your best. It was a Chelsea, some Chelsea coach that was talking about players that when they go into a game and they get nervous that they're not going to perform and they want to be better than their best, they feel this pressure to be better than their best. And he was essentially saying, why? Why do you need to be better than your best? Your best is what got you here in the first place. Just be your best. Why would you use a critical moment to try and be better than your best? That is it. May, I don't know if I'm articulating it well enough, but it's so interesting to think that way because Let's say just making a TikTok like this, there's no real pressure on it. It's like, if it doesn't do, if I don't get all the shots I need, then maybe I come back and reshoot it. If it doesn't, if the video doesn't turn out how I want it to, there's no pressure to post it. But if a brand is paying for this, it's a whole different story. You, there is the pressure to get all of this done and to make it good and to make it perform well. And so you think, how can I, how can I outdo myself on this video? But why do you need to outdo yourself? The brand came to you and started working with you because they like what you're doing already. So just do what you're doing already. Doesn't that seem, doesn't it, to me, when I heard him talk about that, that seemed crazy to me. It was such an epiphany of, oh my goodness, you don't need to overperform in a time of pressure. Just perform and do your best. My back is dripping like no other. Okay, next. My secret to enjoying life. Can I control it? If yes, plan and do that. If not, doesn't matter in my life. It's a very good point. Well, well written, Oliver, well written. It's the stoic, not lifestyle, stoic belief. I don't know what you would call it. But this idea that you, you control what you can control. And if you can't control it, it just doesn't matter in your life. That was a huge shift for me in my life, changing the way I think about things. It also, not only did it help me let go of the things that I can't control and stop worrying about those things, it helped me realize that I have to question, if, if something's not going right, I have to question myself, can I control this? Is this something that I have the ability con to control? And what do I need to do to control this in the right direction? This is like the, um, I don't remember what pod vlog episode it was, where I made a plan of all the things that I thought were going well, all the things that I didn't think were going well. And how do I turn those things that aren't going well into something that is going well? Like what are the things that I can control in that area? Yeah, I, I it, 
drastically change my life having this belief. I don't know, I'd be very interested to see what other people's um, opposing thoughts are to this idea that if you can't control it, just it doesn't matter in your life. I understand that it's hard to let go of things. But what is the point in spending any of your time in, I think I would use the word wasting any of your time and your energy on those things that don't matter. I look at each day and you have a certain amount of energy. Yes, I wouldn't say it's finite because you can increase or decrease with something like caffeine or if you do something you enjoy in the day, it'll give you an energy boost. But if you have, like, if we think about time as spending our time, what do you want to spend your time on, knowing that you'll never get it back? Do you want to spend your time worried and concerned about something that you have no control over? Or would you like to take that time and spend it on something that you can control, you can that, that may improve your life, may not improve your life, whatever that is. But choosing, having the power and realizing mentally that you have the power to do all of these things. I need some water. Five minutes, let's get a photo of this. 145, 24 minutes left. I meant to show the uh, the beads of sweat. Going down my back and I ended up just look, looking, looking like I was trying to show off like that trend that girls would do where they put the camera over their back and it makes their ass, I would say in quotes, look really good. Oh yeah, this is kind of an interesting topic. I would say every day in my life, I'm battling against this idea of finding excuses to not do things or to put things off for whatever reason, maybe because I don't want to do it, maybe because I'm not sure I have the best way to do it and I think that the best way to do it will come to me. Now, there are two reasons why I would put something off thinking that there's a better way to do it or that I don't want to do it. One is because there are times, there are lots of times that I'll put off a video and a few days later, I'll have an, what I think is an amazing idea that is way better than the idea I initially had. And so it pays off that I should wait a few days. Like honestly, right before coming here, I was like, I've only got 10 minutes to try and prepare this video. Should I just wait until tomorrow and I'll spend this afternoon and tonight planning this out and then come and shoot it tomorrow? Even something as small as waiting for an Amazon package to arrive that day. That might be something, that might be enough to stop me from working on something that I need to be working on right now. I don't know if, if you go through the same type of thing too, or if you have similar times in your life 
I have that with almost everything. Like a battle of, should I do this now? Because maybe I'll have a better way to do it somewhere down the line. All right, those, that's a lot of what I have. I'm starting to struggle to think now. I've got 20 minutes left. I'm gonna switch over to the sauna mat, but I think I need to start filming some bits, some more interesting bits of video, like changing positions and stuff for this video. So I'm gonna turn the mic off, put it out, and then I'll get the needle mat in a few minutes. Yes. Dude, my back is so red from the needle mat, but I tell you what, <clears throat> I was expecting it to be an interesting thing to try for the video, but it, it oh, how do I explain this? The sunburn feeling that I got when I first got on it was way more intense than when I normally sit on it at home or lie on it at home. Okay, so there's that part. But once it, once I was able to get through that pain phase and into the, like the, I guess the endorphins being released, I was like so relaxed and I wasn't even thinking about the heat in there at all. That's not how well that worked. I wasn't expecting it to, I was just expecting it to just be something interesting to try and, you know, I, I might get to that meditative state. I may not. That was mad. All right, kind of like last time, heading off to go and pick up some Joes, some Oki Joes, some barbecue. My nose is dry. Sorry about that. Not much we can do about it, I'm afraid. Until I get home. But the Panasonic video that we did, the nose waxing this morning, is currently at... It loads. 96 and a half thousand views, and it was uploaded three hours ago. So, I think that's a winner. That's a winner winner chicken dinner. Now I think there are some interesting parts that I want to share about, I guess, this situation is that um, I'm not going to tell you this will get you like some of the deals that you want because that's not, that's not the case. But for this, I was always prompt at replying to emails. I would provide more information than expected. Um, over deliver feels like I'm just listing off a lot of things that I did well which I guess I kind of am over deliver and people always say over communicate is a bad thing and I can understand how but you would not believe how many times information is shared in this industry or how little information is shared in this industry that needs to be shared. And so I always found that, what, I guess one thing I like to do in my emails, when, I'm, when I know I'm providing more information that's needed, I'll, I might highlight a section that is like, this is the part that you really need from this email, so if you're in a rush, read this. And um, I also might do something where I will I'll provide a high level bit of information and I'll say if you want to know more about this like I'll add some below so for example this Panasonic video was part of a two-parter so the shaving video I also posted the other day and so I let the guy know like this is when I expect our partnership like partnership video to go live but there's also this video I'm doing if you want to know more about it like I'll add it in below. And then you're essentially being, I think, respectful of that person's time. And if you want to know more, you can go down here. If not, move along. Uh, what, are, what else is there? 
Yeah, this guy said very. He's he hasn't had any creator before that has cared about how the post has done for the brand. It's always seemed like, all right, cool. I've got my check. Mm, the video didn't do well. That's too bad. So if you can play that aspect too of that you're invested in having it do well, then you can be on their side. Like understanding that these people who have picked you out and are paying you, they also have their own role to perform, which is to, like if, if they pick me as a creator and my content doesn't perform, there could be lots of nuances, but essentially it means that person failed at finding a creator to give them or what to help achieve whatever their campaign goals are and so it's your job to try and help them do their role as much as possible and while the check may seem a bit smaller on the front end you may be able to develop a longer term partnership and get bigger checks for every video from there on that's the hope and the goal. Now you take that with a pinch of salt. And the brands that are going to lowball you and don't seem to care too much at the beginning, it's not worth playing that long game, I don't think. I don't know if we want to keep talking, if you want to keep listening to me. But uh, I'm going to be sat here for a few minutes, I guess. Two. Cool. You know what? I don't, I don't know if I have that much more to talk about. Other than I'm really pleased with how that video did. And hope it materializes into something else. So, I'm going to get some Joe's Barbecue. If you're wondering... If you have any idea what Joe's Barbecue is, number one, you can order it online, fire, uh, and like have it sent across the state. And number two, a Z-Man is the way to go, or as I should say, a Z-Man. All right, I'm knackered, and I'm going to chug as much water as I can fit in before bed because I was really dehydrated and headachey last time. All right, later, dude.